Hi guys, uh, I'm Mr. Piri, and I'm going to do cash flow statement for entrepreneurship for the N4 student. This is a basic concept in accounting. Uh, however, this one is targeted at uh, those students who don't have accounting background. Uh, I'm going to go through the background and also explain what cash flow means. And then so that you can understand the principle, and when you understand the principle, You'll be able to apply or be able to respond to basic cash flow statement questions that can be asked uh, to you at uh, any given point. Okay, uh, let's go through the slide. Okay, on your left, it's the activity, and on the right is gonna is it the agenda. In some cases, you're going to find this question separately. The addendum will be given to you to complete. I'm going to explain firstly what is cash flow. Cash flow means, uh, in terms of business, it's basically means where is the money going to come from and where are we going to spend the money from. Hence, when you look at the, uh, at the addendum on the right, which is in blue, it, it's got... Uh, Two categories, if I can put it that way, it's got the cash receipt and it's got the cash payment. The first part is where we're going to capture all the monies that we're going to be receiving from anywhere. Most of the, the, the monies are going to probably come from sales and we might borrow money from the loans and then uh, or we, can, we might get some other incomes from other activities that are not business related. Other activities can be anything like interest from the bank. It can be we sold something, like we sold a car, or we sold uh, old furniture. But anything that is business related, like selling of stock, will be captured on the cash sales and cash uh, credit sale. The top, the first transaction that must be captured in terms of money coming in will be your bank balance because before we can talk, talk about the monies coming in and out, we must firstly establish how much we already have or currently have in the bank. We have to capture that amount so that uh, uh, we start from there. We've got the starting point in terms of the cash availability. The bottom part is where we're spending the money or we're distributing the money or we're making payments. Payments are mainly made to the people that we owe money or the people that uh, we buy stock from. When you see the word purchases, most of the time this word is used when we are paying people that we buy stock from. Credit purchases, same thing, just that in this case we bought stock from them but we bought on credit. We must still pay them at a particular period. Other payments can be payments that are not trading related like repayments of the loans, the bonds, and other things. Like maybe the rent payment and others. So, and uh, if you look here, we also have the monthly expenses. On the monthly expenses, these are mainly what we call administrative business expenses. Administrative business expenses are transactions like your Telephone, electricity, wages, advertising station, and the rent, the ones that you see here on the left side. So these are things that have got nothing to do with normal trading in terms of buying and selling of stock, but they are for off managing the administration, the office, so that we can have a place to operate our business. And on your case study, you'll be given the information about the bank, you'll be given information about your estimated sales for that period, you'll be given information about your estimated purchases, how much you're going to spend on buying, and you're also going to be given uh, estimated average expenses uh, uh, figures in terms of how much you might need to pay for various administrative or business expenses. And you'll be given the terms, the business terms, we call them the business terms in terms of buying and selling. When we sell to the, our customers, 
we might sell them for cash, which means we're going to receive money immediately. We might sell for uh, credit, which means we might end up waiting for some time to receive the cash. So we need to have some rules or the terms in terms of how we deal with our customers in terms of sales. At the same time, the terms that we have with the people that we buy from, uh, how are we supposed to pay them when we bought on credit? And then uh, how many days are they giving us to pay uh, the credit transaction that we have with them? We, can, we might also have some additional information for what will happen in the future. We might receive a loan or, a, or, or we might sell something in the business. So every transaction matters. Uh, the transaction will be given to you. You interpret them. You capture them on the agenda to complete your cash flow statement. So let us start from, from the top. From the top, obviously every time you start a statement like this, uh, you have to read your your case study, your case. Now, in this case study, you are asked, they say use the full information to draw up the estimated cash flow statement of Mulefe for the next three months. This three months is important. Let us look at our addendum. We are giving February, March, April. So you're doing February, March, April, which is the three months. Uh, at the end of, uh, you are doing this at the end of uh, January. At the end of January, they have a favorable bank balance of 7,000. So we know that when we close at the end of February, we've got 7,000. So if we had 7,000 when we closed at the end of February, which means when we open our account in February, we're going to be having 7,000. And they also qualify for a loan of 8,000 that was granted in February and the repayment is 650 from April. Now, the loan is granted in February, but the repayment is only starting in April, which means in the uh, February, April, which is in March, it means we pay nothing. They are giving us a free month of installment. Now, capture every transaction uh, uh, based on, you must capture your state, your, your, your addendum, uh, starting from the top, going down, because you might miss something. So now we already have three figures from the heading of the case study only. So they are easy to capture because they're talking about the, the bank, which should be our, our first transaction. Now on your addendum, look at what is given to you. Under the receipt, you got the bank balance at the beginning of the month. At the beginning of February, we know we've got 7,000 because, uh, because we were told that at the end of, uh, because we were told that at the end of January, we had uh, 7,000. If it, if it was at the end of, of January, it means it will be at the beginning of February. So we have to capture that amount so that we don't forget it. So we've got 7,000. I'm going to increase my figures to 12 so that you can read them. Now, you are also told that they also qualify for a loan of 8,000 grand that was granted in February. So in February also, you are receiving a loan of 8,000. So you capture the 8,000 and start with there because it's a very basic information. You are told that there is a repayment. Now, remember this top part of receipt doesn't capture the repayment. Repayment are captured under payment, cash payment. Now we have to go to the loan repayment and go to April and put the 650. Now we are 
done with the first key information that was given to us. Now we have to come to your table of estimates. Now on your table of estimates, you've got the column that tells you if the money is coming in, and you've got the column that tells you the money is that uh, going to go out. So the inflow and outflow. Cash uh, purchases will be your outflows. Sales will be your inflows. When you're given the period, that is uh, the estimated uh, uh, amount and the period at which they will be happening. Or they are, they, yeah, this year they will be happening. So you're going to go month by month, starting with the inflows, because you have to receive, estimate all the money that you're going to receive before you go to estimating all the payments that you will need to pay. So we're going to start with our cash sales. In January, we've got an estimated sale total sales of 17,000. Now, this column and this column, both of them got their own rules. The estimated sales is the total sales, which includes payment, and it also includes, uh, it includes cash receipt, actually, and it also includes uh, credit as customers. So some people came to us and they bought on cash. Some people came to us and they bought on credit. And then this 17,000, it's the total amount that we are estimating. So we have to go down to the rules and look at, okay, what are the rules that relate to sales? Rule number, which is on note number two, it says 40% of all Sales are on credit, their tasks usually pay 30 days later. So what are they saying here? 40% of all sales are on credit and their tasks usually pay 30 days later. So it means out of this, the 40% will be credit and the 60% will be cash. So which means out of this, the 60% which cash will be received immediately in January, and the 40% will be received, uh, will be received in, uh, in within 30 days. Now, normally when you hear, when you see the word, the number 30 days in business, you must know that the money is collected in the, in the following month. So if, if the transaction happens in January, we're going to receive money in February. If the transaction happens in February, we're going to receive the money in March. If it's in March, we're going to receive it in April. Now, so every transaction here will be split in two, cash and credit, cash and credit, cash and credit on this column. So we're starting with 17,000. So now ask yourself a question, what is, I'm going to bring up my calculator. I'm going to bring up my calculator. I'm going to put it on the side. Uh, I don't want to hide the screen. Okay, let me put it here. Okay, I'll put it here. We've got 17,000 run cash. You are told that before, you are told here that 40% is 40% uh, of all sales are on credit. We are currently interested in the credit because the cash that happened in January was received in January. So our cash statement only starts in February, March, April, start from February. So we are not interested in January. So we're gonna leave the cash part because it was taken care of in the previous month. So which means we are interested in the other balance, which is from the 40, we are left with 60. Because 
For every percentage, there is always a hundred. So if it's forty percent, it means sixty percent will be sixty uh, percent. Uh, they say forty percent are on credit. Sixty percent is cash, which is received already in twenty. So let us do the forty percent of seventeen thousand, which will be seventeen thousand times forty percent per side. So you got 6,800 rand of credit. 6,800 rand of credit sale. It happened when? It happened in January. So if it happened in January, it's going to be received in February. It's going to be received here under credit sales. It's going to be received in, in February. So in February, we got we, we are expecting 6,800 rand from the people who bought stock from us on credit. So we're going to capture the 6,800. 6,800 captured. Now we go again and say, okay, we're done with this transaction. It's complete. We're gonna do all the sales until we finished it. In February, we are told that the total sales, and I'll clear this one, the total sales is 22,000. Remember, your split is what? 40, 60, 40% credit, 60% cash. When you come to February, because now February, February is the month that we are starting with now this transaction happens in february which means the cash portion will also be received the cash portion will be received in february and the credit portion will be received when the credit portion will be received in march yeah so we have to calculate the cash portion so that we complete this gap here and calculate the credit portion of the same amount and and then Follow it in March under the credit sales transaction. Okay, so we've got 22,000. So we're going to do the calculation for the, gonna do the calculation for the cash. 22,000 times 60%. Is 13,200. 13,200, which is cash. And then we are left with the credit part. Now, when you're at this stage, you can easily do. For those who are good with math um, literacy and calculations, you can just do, can subtract 22 from that figure. And it must give you 8,800, which is actually the credit portion. So the credit portion is going to go where? The credit portion is going to go on the credit sales. Yeah. Which is going to be received when? It happens in February. It happens in February. It's going to be received in March. So it's going to be received here. 8,800. 8,800. Now for those who want, who may be confused by how we calculate, I'm going to also do the other calculation. Of using the percentage, you can also do 22 times 40%. You're still going to get the same figure. So, whether you subtract after doing the cash portion or you do the full calculation, it's up to you. We're showing you all the method because some of the students have not gone through math literacy and accounting calculation. 
So we still have the uh, 8,800. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have to go to our next transaction, which is happening when? In March. So in March, we are given uh, 24,000 as our estimate. 24,000 rand is estimated to be total sales. The same principles apply, which means 40% going to be credit and the 60% will be cash. So at this stage, you already at this stage, you more or less understand uh, our our because we we now going to follow the same principle, same procedure as we did with others. I'm gonna clear the calculator. If we receive monies in March, if we do an estimate in March, cash will be received in March. The cash will be received in March, and the credit will be received when in paper so if you check there is a trend line here that goes like something like this there's a trend line that goes like that so we're gonna let me bring back my calculator uh, i want to firstly before i want to bring down my I want to, to insert some tools yet. Okay, I wanted to show you that you will notice a trend line that goes like that. So if there's cash here, the credit will come here. If there's cash here, the credit will come somewhere here. So there was this cash. The credit for the same transaction came here. Now there will be cash here. The credit will come here. I hope you can notice the, the trend line. You can notice the trend line. Okay. Uh, so we, we now move going back to our calculator for March. So when we are having a month, the transaction that happens and it affects both cash and credit that must be captured, always start with the cash portion. So we're looking for the cash portion of 24,000. We know the cash portion is 60%. So it's 46. Cash is 60%. So the amount again is 24,000. So let us do our 24,000 times the cash portion, which is 60%, 14,000. Where are we, where we going to put the 14,000? It's going to go. It happens in March. It must go in March because it's cash. It is collected immediately. So we're going to capture our cash there. Uh, I want my pen back. On my pen back, so it's uh, yeah, 14,400. So it's a reminder, so 14400. Now, like I said, when there is when there is a transaction here, you will realize that there must be a credit that comes here. So, back. Remember, our total was 24,000. So, from 24,000, you can immediately, while you're on your calculator, take out the original amount, which is 24,000, to avoid longer calculations. So, just to subtract 24, 1, 2, 3, and then the, the difference will be your credit. So, your credit is now, uh, which it happens in March, you realize that your credit goes to April. We captured in April. So we captured the, the credit in April, which is uh, 9,600. 
9600 I hope you notice the trend line because it, it will repeat itself if you are doing a longer cash flow like maybe for the whole year the trend line will not change especially when you're dealing with 30 days when you're dealing with uh, when you're dealing with 30 days because normally in 30 days in accounting we say the month following the month of sale so if you sell in february you get in when you sell in march you get in february. so it's the month following the month of sale okay let's go back to uh, our next transaction our next transaction it's here in april remember we are now receiving money estimating the money that we're going to be receiving so uh, we're gonna we are estimating that we're gonna sell 34,500 items 34 34,500 worth of stock so again reminder in terms of sales it is 60 percent cash 40 percent credit and another thing what you can do for yourself is to come here next to the cash in bracket put yourself the percentage for cash which is 60 percent so that it remains a reminder to you and then on the credit put for yourself the reminder that is 40 percent and you close it so that as you're doing you remind yourself how to split the totals now we are still on we are on the last transaction which is uh, uh, the last transaction which is the total sale of 34 34 so we have to calculate 34 500 34 500 start with cash first multiply by six zero percentage sign equals sign twenty thousand seven hundred which is cash now you in twenty thousand seven hundred you immediately capture your amount of cash it happens in remind yourself when does it happen it happened in april so it must be captured when in april so this twenty thousand seven hundred happens here is there now ask yourself the difference does the difference matter you are only asked to end up in April so the credit portion will be received when in May and you are not asked to do May so you end up here in terms of uh, collections from sales both cash and credit sales so the top part of our uh, our uh, the top part of our our cash flow is almost complete. If you check uh, here, all our sales are taken care of. As in we raise and put it properly, uh, all, all our cash are taken care of. There, cash. Ah, I'm not very good with this one because I'm not using a pen. I'm using a mouse, so it's not going very well. I wanted to block this area. Yes, almost like that. Now there we've got the loan. Now remember, uh, let me start from the top. The bank stays there because we are going to complete our table. And after that, we close off month by month, forwarding the balance to the next month and the next month. So whatever the money that is left in February must be forwarded to March. The money left in March must be forwarded to April. So we are done with our sales, which is the major inflow of cash. Uh, the, uh, most of our money comes from the, the, the sales that we do in business. Gonna erase that. Now let us talk about the loan. Remember, the loan 
the loan that you are receiving is here it's a once off thing so you cannot put eight thousand eight thousand now you receive it in february it stays there nothing happens nothing else happens which means yeah there's nothing dash dash now when we capture there when you're going to capture there in in your in your books you're just gonna put zero there and you're gonna put zero there because there's nothing you're receiving nothing from the loan it happens once now same as the repayment of the loan they say you're only gonna start paying in april which means here becomes zero, here becomes zero. It's closed. Now, what the, the, the next thing after, uh, under our remember, now we are under the cash receipt. Where is the money going to come from? The money is coming in from the bank, from the service, from the loan, and we got other. Now, remember I said other can be anything. Like if, the, if we left money in the bank and the bank gives us income, is other. other income is any income that is not part of trading. Trading means selling of stock and receiving money from the government. So we have to go to our table and look for other income. Now we know that this part is sales and we know that this part is expenses so it cannot be income and this one was the, is the rule number one for our sales and credit for us trade sales and cash sales. This one will be the rule number two for our payment. So it is not money coming in. Now we've got this one here where the money is going to come in. She uh, she bought a delivery vehicle in February. Oh, no, the money is going to go out. So in me, the money is going to go out. I'm going to erase that. In March, she will sell. See, they say she will sell. Immediately when they say she will sell, you know the money is going to come in. She will, she will sell a computer worth 4000 So the money, some money will come in, in. What is important here is the month. The month and the amount. So we need to know when and how much. Okay. How much and when. Simple. So we know it's when. It's in, in March. So we're gonna capture, we're gonna capture, we're gonna go to March. In other income in March and put, we are told it's 4,000. 4,000, yeah? Is there in, any other, there's no other transaction for February, for April, there's nothing. So it means here yeah, it's gonna be zero. It means here yeah, it's gonna be zero. Because there's no other. So our top table is almost complete. So we done there, we done there. Uh, we we done with this one. So we done with this rule. So now we are left with this, which which is governed by this rule here. So this rule goes with the payment so that we can complete the payment side. So it's up to you. You can close February and do your total and put it here. Or you can complete your table and do the and, and total do the total slate. For the purpose of uh, uh, collecting marks. I prefer you complete your table and do the totals column by column. So we're going to leave this part for now of totals. We're going to analyze transaction, capture the figures, and then do the totals column by column. Okay. So, which means now we're going to our purchases which comes under payment. Now, note here, you've got cash payment, and your table starts with loan repayment with recapture, and it says monthly expenses. Now, 
monthly expenses are the easiest one to do because uh, you have to just add all your monthly expenses and then you put a figure across the figure is going to go here here and here because this amount happens every month all of them happen every month so so we're going to add them we're going to bring back our calculator bring back our calculator and we're going to add our expenses so our expenses is um, is 425 plus 380 plus 5800 plus 750 plus 320 plus 4500 and then you notice that even on the rent they got the, the pay day so I think we wanted to say pay month PM. So you do a consign. So your total expenses. So this area here, uh, twelve thousand twelve one seven five. Every month you got to pay your administration to spend on administration. 12,170. 12, so you have to put it in 12,175. I'm going to erase so that we capture an amount. I'm going to have my 12,175. And it's going to go across. This figure is going to be copied across because it's going to be the same every month. It's not gonna change. I think I messed up my my alignment. I don't like I don't like the way it looks. I want it to be properly aligned. Must be properly aligned. So twelve one seven five. Twelve one seven five. So it's easier. So quick marks there. Just put them across. Add them all together. Put them across. Then you're done. You collected some marks here. And I should think should be like one and three marks here. Or more. You know? I'll check the total. I'll check the weighing of the marks later. Now you are left with uh, this payment. Now these payments are related to this. When we buy stock, and when we buy stock, we buy on cash and we buy on credit. So remember what I said. Let us re read the rule. They say ten percent of all purchases. On credit 10 percent credit which means what the different I said there's always a hundred so if 10 percent down credit means 90 percent we pay cash so as your quick reminder what you should do you come here say okay what is the percentage for my cash purchases my cash purchase is 90 what is the percentage for my credit purchases? 10%. So this company is, is buying less things on credit and buying more things on cash. So now that you got them, uh, as your reminder, you can even write them. Put them as a reminder, then you start your transactions. 
you are you start from the top your first transaction in january we are done with this one we're done here your first transaction in january is uh, actually uh, 12,000 worth of stock that you need to buy out of the 12,000, 90% will be cash, 10% will be credit. So because it's January, we don't have a January month yet. So which means the cash part is taken care of in January, but the credit part will be paid when 30 days, remember 30 days, the month following the month of sale. So when we buy something in January, in January, we're gonna pay in Feb. We're gonna pay in February. So, which means the ten percent of this twelve thousand will be paid as a credit payment on the credit purchases in February. So, let us bring back our calculator. We are told. We are we are giving twelve thousand. So twelve thousand. We are looking for ten percent because ten our ten ten percent is our credit payment contract. Ten percent of twelve thousand becomes one thousand two hundred. Where is it going? Credit. One thousand two hundred under the credit. When in February because the transaction happened in January. So we have to capture it there. 1,200. Remember, note that we did nothing there. Because the next transaction happens actually in February. And it's going to affect that column and that column. So remember my trend line. I said the trend line will go always like like that. If something happens here, there will be something there. So because something happened somewhere in January, there is actually a January line, but we don't see there. So something happened in January. Something happens in January. The money is received in, in February. Yeah. Something happens in February, the money will be received in March. So you must notice your trend, your trend line. Trend line. Okay, so let us uh, do our calculation. In February, we are giving 17,000 rent estimated total, estimated total uh, purchases. 17,000. So let us capture 17,000. 17,000. Now remember, you got now this transaction because it happens in. February. It affects your whole table. It affects February and March, which means you must do it. It affects the cash and the credit. So you always start with the cash, which means you must do 90 times 90%, 15,900. It happened when? In February, it must be captured in February because it is cash payment. So we pay immediately 15,300. 15,300. The difference from this 17,000 and 15,300 will be credit, or in another way, the 10% of this will be credit. So you can use the subtract. Original amount seventeen thousand, and it will give you one thousand seven hundred. Whether you do the subtraction formula or you do the percentage of ten percent, the answer will be the same. Ten percent of seventeen is one thousand seven hundred. So where are you gonna capture it? Uh, remember our trend line again. If it's here, if it's here, it means this one will be captured there. If it's here, it will be captured there. So the trend line continues of 
in this one is only one thousand seven hundred. Okay, we are done with this one. We go to the next uh, tran uh, transaction, which is it happens in uh, here. It is it happens in March eighteen five hundred estimated purchases, of which it's gonna be ninety ten again. We start with the cash, so it's eighteen five hundred. So let's be eight. 18,500 times 90% 16,650 now 16,650 becomes our cash away in March it depends in March it must be captured, it captured in March because it's cash so we have to capture 16,650 okay 16,650 Five zero. Now, if there is an amount there, there will be an amount there if we are dealing with thirty dollars. So, maybe another thing that you must put for yourself there, under the credit, you must put the the the, the terms. Maybe or they maybe say three zero days. Three zero days. This one is cash, so it. I'll put COD, normally we call it cash on delivery. COD. For your notes, don't write this in exam. But this one, this 30 days you can write. COD, you don't need to write. Some the markup may not understand. 90% in 10 you can write if you want. Okay, so we've got 16,500. The original amount is 18,500. So you just do subtract. 18,500, which is the original amount. And you are left with 1850. And 1850 from 18,500, you can just see 10% without doing any calculations. Where is it going? It happens in March. It must be collected. It must be it will be paid to the customers, to the create to the creators. Now, creditors are also called suppliers, so it must be paid to our creditors or suppliers in April. So we're gonna capture it in April. Uh, what is it? 1850. Uh, 18. Uh, 1850. So you see my trend line. The next transaction is. April, in April you are estimating to buy, to spend twenty seven thousand rand. So you're gonna spend twenty seven thousand rand. Remember, you got the ninety ten split, which means the ninety percent the cash. So you start by calculating the cash ninety spend. So you got twenty four thousand three hundred. 24,300 cash, 24,300 that you must pay. Remember our trend line, the credit part will be somewhere here, which is what? May, somewhere here. There is a May, uh, there is a May column that you don't see here. So we are not doing the May, so you know the credit because it doesn't affect your work. You are only asked to do until here. So we are done with our purchases. Done with our purchases. And now you go down with your list of cash payments. Now you see there, there is other, there is other, uh, not that one, I, I underlined the wrong thing there. But other payments, no. Now other payments can be anything else. You see, the loan is categorized properly it's as a loan. Stock is purchases. Other payments can be anything. Can be uh, you buying something, you buying a building, or you buying a car. Or as long as it's not stock, 
or does is not a bank borrowed. The loan we call them bank borrowed. This payment purchases are called uh, trading transactions for stock. Other payment can be paying the uh, buying cars and other equipment for the business, like buying a computer and things like that, or to work in the business. Now, we go back to your case study and look for any other transaction that that is not stock and that is not bank related like a loan. So the only the, we are we done with this transaction. We done with the transaction, done with this trans eliminate them, we done with this, we done with this one, we done with this one, we done with that one, we done with that one. We also done with that one. We are left with what? We are left with this transaction that we didn't do anything. So you must take it into consideration. So it is your only other payment. So what are they saying? They're saying she bought a delivery vehicle in February 2014. The deposit was 10,000. Now remember what our interest is. We need the amount and when. Amount and when. So they are just the first part that we are told about the 10,000 on deposit in February. So before you can even go to the next slide, capture the transaction, breaking it piece by piece. So the first, the first piece we are told about February deposit of 10,000. So we capture it, 10,000 deposit. Then we continue the statement. They say, and the monthly repayment thereafter was 1,000. The monthly repayment thereafter was 1,000 for 54 months. So immediately after paying, immediately after paying the deposit, thereafter I start paying a thousand rand every month. So there will be a thousand followed by another thousand. Now you are done with all the transactions. You've done with the, everything that is on your case study. So you can now. Focus on closing off the balances. You come back here and you're going to close off the balances. Now remember, I said when you close, you close column by column. Column will mean the whole of February downward before you move to March and April. Then we're going to close off the receipt first we add all this and we're gonna get what you call total cash available and then we're gonna do our total payment and do the difference between the the money that we have we take out the payment that we are making and see what how much is still left in the bank so these areas are key the cash available and cash payment and the money that will be left in the bank these are the key areas so we bring back our calculator our calculator can permanently sit here so we start with what here the screen okay we've got 7,000 plus 13,200 plus 6,800 plus 8,000. And that's all. So the cash that is available in February is 35,000. So it must be captured here, 35,000. 35,000. This will normally have myself a line to show that this is the calculations area. It is a calculations area. And this one is closing balance area. That's why it will probably have double line. 
this area here you put in there's nothing that is there it's just a heading just a heading within this one is just a heading okay now that we've got our we've got our cash that comes in the total amount we're going to calculate how we're going to spend it in that same period before okay let us do a total first we got 12 1 7 5 plus 15 3 0 0 plus 1 0 0 1 200 plus 10,000 so you must spend 38,000 right? you should spend 38 38.6 Six seven five eighty eight six seven five eighty eight six seven five. Now, if you check here, you've got more money to spend than the one that you have in the bank. Now, when you see these figures, do not worry because it happens in the business that sometimes you've got more expenditure than your cash inflow. Which means you are running on a credit card you are running on an overdraft hence they use the word here they say favorable favorable means at the beginning you had money but that doesn't mean you will end up with money at the end of the day because you might need to spend more like in this case you're going to spend more and your bank balance at the end will be unfavorable because now 35 minus 38 gives you a negative which means you got an unfavorable balance so let us do the difference i'm going to clear this one because you must calculate from the top to the bottom so that you see what is favorable or not because if i start from the bottom upward you might think the bank the balance is favor is, is favorable so i start with 35,000. Then you subtract 8865 uh, uh, So I think it's correct. 65, uh, yeah, 57. No, I think it's 75. I think I made a mistake. I'll just do a quick correction. Quick correction. Yeah, 675. Yeah, it's correct. 675. Where's my calculator now? Bring back my calculator. Thirty-five thousand minus thirty-eight six seven five. Call sign. Uh, yeah, uh, thirty-five thousand minus thirty-eight six seven five. Gives you three thousand six hundred and seventy-five. Thirty-six seventy-five. So thirty-six seventy-five is what we have. Thirty-six seventy-five. Now, here yeah, you're gonna put it. If it's a negative, you put it in bracket. Is thirty-six seventy-five. If it's a negative, put it in bracket to show that you are working on over budget. i'm going to increase it that so that this our column here doesn't look too small and too faint so you are on a negative so you can put the, the sign negative in front of it or you can put it in bracket immediately if it gives you a negative like this so so that you remember it's a negative because when it's a negative it stays in the bank as a negative so balance the bank balance at the end of the month becomes the bank balance at the beginning of the following month which means the 3675 will be opening in march so let's go and open with it and it's a negative remember so you put it in brackets or you put a negative sign so that you must remember so it's 
86, 75. Now you are having a, a bank overdraft. You owe the bank some money. You, you spend money that you don't have. So let us add, let's see if other monies that are in, that we are receiving can cancel what we have in the bank. So when you do the total for the cash available, you always start with the positive one. So you got 14,400, 8,800, 4,000. Then you're going to take out that small portion that is negative in the bank so that uh, because the bigger amounts must, must outweigh the small amounts. So you got 4,000 plus 8,800 plus 14,400. Cost to 27,200. Remember, take out the negative minus 36,475. Fine. Now you got 23,525. 23, it is positive. That doesn't mean when we subtract that we'll end up with a positive, but at the moment it is positive. So we capture 23,525. Uh, 23,5,25. So uh, our current bank is sitting on a on a positive. So we go down to our we go down to our payments and do the totals. Before we consider that, we do our totals again. So we we bring down we bring up our calculator and say, okay, we got 12, 12, 175 plus 16, 16, 16, 650 plus 1700 plus 1000. So we got 31525. 31525. So we capture as a total there 31525. Five, two. It is. It is. Uh, remember here, we don't need to put negative or positive because the word here says payment, so we know everything here will be subtracted from the top. Because of this heading is called its own heading, so we don't need to put it. But the bank is an independent one. This one is independent. That one is independent. If it's an if it's overdraft, it must be negative. If it's positive, it must be positive. However, the totals from the top must subtract the totals from the bottom so that we get the balance for the next month. So if you want to to make it easy for yourself, after adding the totals here. Only this heading here, only only this uh, column here. Yeah. You can actually, if you want, especially for uh, for those who might think or they might forget, you can put these figures in uh, in bracket. Then put these figures in bracket so that you remember that if this figure in bracket is small, it means it carries a bracket. So we're gonna start by subtracting from the top, always from the receipt. So you got 23525, 23525, subtract. 31, 31, uh, 525. It gives you a negative 8,000. Remember, I said you're going to put in bracket negative 8,000. 
we are still on overdraft we still, we still owe the bank uh, we still owe the bank and we are working we, we, we are swiping a credit card actually we are, swip we are swiping a credit card to collect this one because we are here we are working with these two coins Okay, this 8,000 is what happened at the end of March, which means we must carry it forward to April. So in April, we will have a negative 8,000 rand. So we call it an unfavorable. Remember, we spoke about favorable, and this one was favorable. We put it in yellow. If it's unfavorable, it can be in red. Red in this color. The, this is unfavorable. This one's unfavorable. This one was red. So the last two are unfavorable. Okay, and then the totals have been favorable because they had other monies coming from elsewhere from sales. And here we had money from the low, so we had some money. Now let us do the total again. Bring the calculator with here. So okay, we got twenty thousand seven hundred coming from sales, and we got another nine thousand six hundred coming from sales. Plus, uh, actually subtract. We have to take out the eight thousand rand that we owe the bank. Because we have been swiping the credit card. Now, when you take out the money that we owe the bank, we are left with 22,300, which is positive. We're going to capture it there. Positive. Uh, I must remove this color because it might be blocking me. The figure again 23,800. Remove the highlighter. Okay, now remove that highlighter 23, 22, 300. 22, 300 becomes our positive figure. Now the bank uh, the total for the for the receipt i'm going to remove the highlighter also here so that i can put figures so we have to do our total payment how much do we need to pay at, during april yeah we need to pay 650 for the installment of the loan plus 12 one seven five plus twenty four uh, plus twenty four three hundred of purchases plus one thousand rand of the other payment of the car. So in total, we must pay thirty eight one twenty five. Thirty eight one twenty five. Thirty eight one twenty five. We've got 22 we must pay 38 so we might will we will re, we are still in the red we are still order so we do our totals first we do 22 300 minus 88 125 bring back our calculator 88 125 subtract 22 300 so we are on a negative 15825 15 8 25 15 8 25 15 8 25 15 8 25 15 8 25 15 8 25 15 8 25 15 8 25 now 
at this moment you are, you are done with your table you've got your opening balance you receive monies from the from cash sales credit sales and the loan and then there's a total the total that you receive you are spending the money here you are buying stock and other expenses and your total payments there then the total receipt minus the total payment becomes your bank balance your bank balance where does it go uh, the pain your bank balance from here always go to opening your bank balance from here going open the next one and then when it goes down then it's left with bank so as we sitting at the end of April, you'll be left with 15,825 overdrive. Actually, you do not have money. You owe the bank some money. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do more activities, probably with more additional columns, more period, and maybe more payment period, like probably 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So that you see how how it affect your 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 calculations and how the trend line will move. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.